أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على محمد وعليه الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Can I hear you? Okay رمضان كريم And the answer Kind of can hear it in my soul But come on really loudly الله أكرم Allah is more honored and more generous than absolutely anyone. Can we start with the salawat, please? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil faraja. We're going to do some, look at some rules of Quran recitation today. And I told you today, we would be reciting Surah Al-Alaq. This is the first surah, chrono chronologically, the first five ayat, were the first five to be revealed. It's surah number 96. And in this surah, there is a sajday tilawat, or and it's a wajib sajday tilawat. Sajday tilawat means a sajda recited or sajda done for recitation. Now there's 14 in the Quran. Four are wajib, ten are mustahab. And we're going to look at the four that are wajib. Okay. So the way to remember them is to maybe remember a mnemonic. A mnemonic is sort of a sentence that helps you remember. So the way I remember it is to say something like. When a star is born, can you remember that? When a star is born, there's some stars here, look. When a star is born, you will do two such this. Can you remember that? Star, born, and two such this. So surah for star is surah to najm. It's surah number 53. Now you can remember that by when mom's doing all these awesome things. You could say, you're such a 53, which means you're such a star. So a star, so for one of them is in surah to najm. Born, Surah Al-Alaq, that's 96, is talking about the clot or the cells in the mom's womb which become a baby. Okay, it's Alaq. We'll talk about it, inshallah. So, if you can imagine born, so star is born, 96, and then two sajda, Surah to sajda there's a surah in the Quran called Surah to sajda and that's Surah number 32. And then there's another surah which is called Surah to hamim sajda Okay, so you have to pull that, and that's surah number 38. So you can remember those four. You know that the wajib such that comes in there. Now, what are you supposed to do? We've got some bookmarks somewhere that maybe you can ha you can you can download off the site. But basically, whenever you hear these ayat, these four loudly, uh, live, not loudly, when you hear them live, that means right now if you're listening to me live and we're going to recite it, we're going to do such that. If you hear them recorded. You don't have to do sajda, but better too. You don't need wudu. You don't need qibla. But you do need a sajda ga. That means you must be able to do sajda on something which you're supposed to, like the earth or anything that comes out of it, which you don't wear and which you don't eat. That's a basic thing that we need to, to work through. So you need to do sajda. And you don't have to recite anything in sajda. You don't have to. However, it is recommended to have a recitation. Now, it's on here. I'm just going to go over it very, very quickly. Okay? So, it starts off with, La ilaha illallah. And you can do that. If you can't remember anything, at least remember, La ilaha illallah. So, it starts off by saying, La ilaha illallah, haqqan haqqa. There is no God but Allah. And that is the absolute truth. Then again, La ilaha illallah, imana wa tasdika. So, there is no God but Allah. I believe in him and I have faith in him. Then again, la ilaha illallah. So the first three are la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, ubudiyyatan warikka, which means I am his slave and I'm tied to him. So if you can't remember anything, three times la ilaha illallah. Let's go to the fourth one. We say, sajadtu laka ya rabbi. I am doing the sajda for you, ya rabbi. Ta'abbudan warikka. The same thing recited in the third la ilaha illallah. I am a slave of you and I am tied to you. Right, the fifth one. Or sixth one rather. La mustankifan wa la mustakbiran. I have no pride. I have no arrogance when I do sajda to you. Bal ana abdu zalilun khaifun mustajir. But I am simply a, an abd, a slave of yours, with humility, with fear. And you remember mustajir from mujir. Do you remember? I am one who seeks, who's looking for safety from you. So try and learn it. Or try and keep it with you so you can recite it when you do the when, when we do the sajda. Okay? So we're gonna recite Surah al alaq but before we do that, let's just talk about it a little bit. So the first order to humanity is in this surah was Ikra. That means Allah did not say pray first, fast first, nothing. First thing he said was Ikra, read, memorize, understand, apply, and teach. And if you look at the focus of the surah, 
It is getting close to Allah through awakening of the intelligence, reading, learning, listening, and by submission. Both go hand in hand. So let's see what this surah talks about. Okay, by the way, the first ayah says, Iqra bismi ladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Rabb who created. That is why you and I start everything with Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim we started with the name of Allah because that's what he told us. First thing he told us was, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Rabb. So we do it with everything. So let's look at the sections. The first section is Ayah 1 to 5. The first five that were revealed. And it's talking about reading, learning, writing. Really important. This is what awakes intelligence. That's what makes you and me a human being. The second section says, that somehow, when we gain a bit of knowledge, and we think we're really clever, we now think that we have become independent. We don't need God. We don't need Him at all. So the second section, which is Ayah 6 to 8, said the human being forgets that everything comes from Allah, even our knowledge. The third section gives us a historical example of this person who was known as, his name was Amr bin Hisham. And he was known as Abu al-Hakam, the father of wisdom. So much intelligence. Yet he rejected Allah, he rejected the Prophet and he was so mean to the Prophet and his followers. And therefore the Prophet called him Abu Jahl, the father of ignorance. Can you imagine? So clever, yet couldn't understand that. And finally, the last section, which is Ayah 19. It starts with Iqra and then it tells you, if you want to get clo closer to Allah, you have to do sujood. And this is where the wajib sujda is. So what's going to happen is that when we recite it and I finish the last bit, I'm going to go and do sajda and so will you. Okay? Doesn't matter. You will go into sajda, you will say la ilaha illallah three times. If you know the recitation, you will say it. Or you will just put your head down and say subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, or whatever recitation you want, or nothing. But you will do a sajda. Okay? So the surah literally begins with iqra, read, ends with waqtarib, come close to Allah. Close, closeness to Allah can only come with reading, learning, writing, and then submitting to Him. Really, really important. Okay? All right. So we're going to recite it. Have you got a, a sajdaga with you? A sajdaga is what you might want to call a moor or a tissue or something you can do sajda on. So I can give you a moment while you go and look for it. Um, and have it near you because as soon as we finish reciting this you will have to go into sajda and that's a wajib sajda like I said if you listen to it not live if you listen to it recorded then you don't but this is live um, the other thing you can do is switch it off but I don't know whether you'd like to do that I wouldn't like you to switch it off so I've given you a moment inshallah you found a sajda ga somewhere and we're going to start reciting it are you ready? surah number 96 recite it with me Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit more time. If you recite the surah while you're traveling, then um, you will have safety from accidents. It'll keep you safe. If you've got something really precious that you want to keep safe, recite it. Recite it at home. So it's like your force field of an alarm. It really keeps everything safe. Okay, enough time. Now we're going to recite it, okay? La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Somebody asked me why I recited la ilaha illallah twice. In fact, I had a couple of queries today. The la ilaha illallah is there to focus ourselves on Allah. It doesn't matter how many times you recite it. I normally recite it quite a few times, but here too because we're short of time. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Khalaq al insana min alaq. Iqra wa rabbuka al akram. الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم كلا إن الإنسان لا يطغى أرعاه ستغنى إن إلى ربك الرجعى أرأيت الذي ينهى عبدا إذا صلى أرأيت إن كان على الهدى أو أمر بالتقوى أرأيت إن كذب وتولى ألم يعلم بأن الله يرى كلا لئن لم ينتهي لنسفعا بالناصية
Nasiatin Kadibatin Khatia Falyad Unadia Sened Ozabania Kella la Tutiahu was Judwak Tarib Okay, you've done your sajda, that's your wajib sajda. So if you've done your sajda now, it's really important that you know them. You remember them again? Yes? Which ones were they? When a star is born, star, born, do sajdas. Najm, alak, sajda, and hamim, sajda. Okay, so we're going to do these four. You're going to remember them wherever they are. Okay, can we have a salawat please? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa atil farajaw. So we're going to start with the Ali wa Yadim, but just a little bit of a word of caution here that we need to understand. We're now at the doorstep of the ten last ten nights and days of Ramadan. It's a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal time. But it's a bit of a soul-wrenching Ramadan. That means it's a really hard Ramadan. We've seen horrific deaths horrific sufferings because of a non-visible virus. When I sat down today to be able to write down my aspirations for Laylatul Qadr, uppermost in my mind are the images of the hospital beds, of the people who have been left behind to grieve for the ones they loved. And somehow, when I started writing what I wanted, it was so insignificant. It didn't matter. And I kept on wanting to say, give them peace, give them safety, give them security, give them normality. And there's, there's some words in Dual Iftata that I remember so much. So you're going to write your aspirations for tomorrow. You know, when we say, oh, Allah, we complain to you on the absence of our Prophet and the gaba of our Imam and the abundance of our enemies. And I would put coronavirus there too. The scarcity of our numbers, the difficulty of our trials and the victory of the, of the age over us. So... How do you deal with this anger, this sadness, this, this utter helplessness? Do it with dua. And so when we read this, think about all these people, okay? So let's start with the Aliyu Ya Adim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Ya Aliyu Ya Adim. Ya Ghafuru Ya Rahim. Anta Rabbul Adim. الذي ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير وهذا شهر أذمته وكرمته وشرفته وفضلته على الشهور وهو الشهر الذي فرضت صيامه عليه وهو شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وجعلت فيه ليلة القدر وجعلتها خيرا من ألف شهر فيا ذا المني ولا يمن عليك من علي بفكاك رقبتي من النار في من تمن علي وادخلني الجنة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ادخل على أهل القبور السرور اللهم أغني كل فقير اللهم أشبع كل جايع اللهم أكس كل عريان اللهم أقضي دين كل مدين اللهم فرجا كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل عسير اللهم أصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشف كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اقضي عنا الدين واغننا من الفقر انك على كل شيء قدير اللهم رب شهر رمضان الذي انزلت فيه القران وافترضت على عبادك فيه الصيام 
salli ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad wa rizukni hajja baytikal haram fi aami hadha wa fi kulli aam wa gufir li tilka dhunub al-aidham fa innahu la yaghfir wa ghayruka ya rahmanu ya allam Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad so now we're going to look at part 18 of Dua al-Iftita. And I said it would focus, it focuses totally on Imam al-Mahdi at-Jalallahu Faraj. Oh my goodness, so much on him. So when we're going to recite this, we're going to stand up in respect, okay? And when you hear his name, you bow your head down and you put your right hand on your head. It's a form of respect. So I'm going to go word by word and then we'll recite it. Well, Khalafil Hadil Mahdi and the successor and the guide and the rightly guided one. You know how old was this year? 1,186 years. My goodness. Hujajika ala ibadika. He's the proof of your creation. You know, Surah Al Qadr is proof of Imam Mahdi because when the angels come down, where do they come down? There has to be a place of purity. And the only place is where Imam Mahdi is. Okay. Wa umanaika, his trustworthy, fibiladik, the only trustworthy one in your lands. Salatan kathiratan da'ima, so many blessings. Kathir, lots of them forever on him. Allahumma wa salli ala, oh Allah, send your blessings on. Waliyi amrika al-qa'im, the one who is custodian he holds all our affairs he's vigilant muammil he's reliable well adil he's he's just and muntadar he's the one whom we wait for we say, tell allah surround him with angels can you imagine we're actually saying huffahu all these angels put them all around him protect him help him aid him Help him with, with the Holy Spirit, Ya Rabbul Alameen, or the Rabb of the world. Allahumma j'alhu da'ya ila kitabik. Make him the one who calls to your book. Wal qaimi bidinik. He establishes the right religion. Istaklifu fil ard. That he becomes the successor in the earth. Kama istaklafta ladina min kabli. Just as those who were rightly guided became successors before. Makin lahu dina hulla. Dirta dayta hulla. Establish for him the religion which you have approved. Abdil hu min ba'dihi kofi amna. Change this fear into safety. Pray to him, ask him, let us ask him to change this fear we have today into safety. Ya Abu la Yushriko Bika He serves you. He doesn't he doesn't ascribe anybody to you, no partners. Allahumma aizahu wa aiz wa azizbi. Strengthen him and through him strengthen us. One surnu help him, one tasirbi, and through him help us. One surhu nasra aziza, give him a massive help, massive help from you. Remember, we're going to do back of Badr and you'll see the help. Give him an easy victory. Give him this awesome authority and help from you. Through him, make your religion manifest make it clear and the way of your prophet hatta until la yastaghfi bi shay'in min al-haqq makhafata ahad min al-haqq that nothing from the truth remains hidden from any of your creation so they know the truth so i will wait for him you just just wait for him right let's recite dua al-iftita and when we come to this part we're going to stand up okay all right let's start allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إني أفتتح الثناء بحمدك وأنت مسدد للصواب بمنك وإيقنت أنك أنت أرحم الراهمين في موضع العفو والرحمة وأشد المعاقبين في موضع النكال والنقمة وأعظم المتجبرين في موضع الكبرياء والعظمة اللهم ذنت لي في دعائك ومسعلتك فاسمع يا سميع مدحتي وعجب يا رهيم دعوتي وأقل يا غفور وثرتي فكم يا إلهي من كربة قد فرجتها 
وهموم قد كشفتها وأثرة قد أقلتها ورحمة قد نشرتها وحلقة بلاء قد فككتها الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الله أكبر الحمد لله بجميع محامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها الحمد لله الذي لا مضاد له في ملكه ولا منازع له في أمره الحمد لله الذي لا شريك له في خلقه ولا شبيه له في عظمته الحمد لله الفاشي في الخلق أمره وحمده الظاهر بالكرم مجد الباسط بالجود يدا الذي لا تنقص خزائنه ولا تزيده كثرة العتا إلا جودا وقرما إنه هو العزيز الوهاب اللهم إني أسألك قليلا من كثير مع حاجة بإليه عظيمة وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كثير وهو عليك سهل يسير اللهم إن عفق عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيتي وسفهك عن ظلمي وسترك على قبيه عملي وهل مكان كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطي وعمدي أتمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه من الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وأريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من إجابتك فسرت عدوك آمنا وأسألك مستعنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك فإن ابتعني أتبت بجهلي عليك ولعل الذي يبتعني هو خير لي لعلمك بياكبة الأمور فلم أر مولا كريما أصبر على عبد الله من منك عليه يا ربي إنك تدعوني فولي عنك وتتحبب إلي فتبخذ إليك وتتودد إلي فلا أقبل منك كأن لي تتول عليك فلم يمنع فذلك من الرحمة لي والإحسان إلي والتفضل علي بجودك وكرمك فارحم مبدك الجاهل وجد عليه بفضل إحسانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله مالك الملك مجر الفلك مسخر الرياء فالك الأسباح ديان الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على علمه بعد علمي والحمد لله على عفوه بعد قدرتي والحمد لله على طول أناته في غضبي وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالك الأسباح ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الذي بعد فلا يرى فقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي ليس له منازع يعادل ولا شبيه يشاكل ولا ظهير يعضد قهر بإزته العزة وتواضع لأدمته العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني هنا ونادي ويستر علي كل أورة وأنا عسي ويؤذم النعمة فلا ويؤذم النعمة علي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة هنية قد أعتاني وعظيمة مقوفة قد كفاني وبهجة مونكة قد أراني فأثني عليه هامدا واذقره مسبها الحمد لله الذي لا يختق حجاب ولا يقلق باب ولا يرد سائل ولا يخيب عامل الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويدع المستقبلين ويحلك ملوكا ويستخلف آخرين والحمد لله كاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الحاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضي حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين 
الحمد للہ الدی من خرشتی ترد السما و سکان و ترجف الارد و عمار و تموج البہار و میس بہ من غمرات الحمد للہ الدی ہدانا لہذا و ما کن لنحتیا لولا ان ہدان الحمد للہ الدی یقلق و لم یقلق و یرزق و لا یرزق و یتعم و لا یتعم و یمیت الاحیاء و یمیت الموت و هو حی لا یموت بیده الخیر و هو علا کل شئن قدیر اللہم صلی علی محمد عبدک و رسولک و عمینک و صفیک و حبیبک و خیرتک علی خلقک و حافظ سرک و مبلغ رسالاتک أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأزكى وأنما وأتيب وأتر وأسنى وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت وسلمت على أحد من إبادك وأنبيائك ورسلك وصفتك وأحل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وصل على علي نمير المؤمنين ووسي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك واخي رسولك وهجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبي العظيم وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزحرة سيدة النساء العالمين وصل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الحدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة وصل على إمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الحادي المحدي وجدك على عبادك ومنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دعيما اللهم وصل على ولي أمرك القائم المعمل والعدل المنتذر وهفه بملائكتك المقربين وعيده بروه القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم اجعله الداعي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استخلفه في الأرض كما استخلفت الذين من قبلي مقل له دينه الذي ارتديته لا عبدله من بعد خوفي عمنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيئا اللهم عزه وعزز بي وانصره وانتسر بي وانصره نسرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يسيرا وجل له من لدنك سلطانا نسيرا اللهم عظهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستقفي بشيء من الحق مقافة عهد من الخلق اللهم صل على محمد وعال محمد just a little bit about Imam so we can just keep it at the back of our minds born on the 15th of Shaban 255 after Hijra in 260 after Hijra when he's 5 there's Ghaybat al-Sugra you gotta remember these four what we call representatives in Ghaybat al-Sugra okay so you had Uthman bin Sa'id you had Muhammad bin Uthman you had Hussein ibn Rao and you have Ali bin Muhammad Samari and these four served Imam till he was 74 at 74, Imam goes into Gaybatul Qubra. Now, we are waiting for Imam. That's why I call him Munta, that we're waiting for him. So when he comes, there will be a global government. There will be victory of righteousness. If you can imagine, there will be no areas wasted. There will be no wastages. The maximum utilization of the gifts of the earth. There will be a just distribution of wealth and property. There will be an eradication of war. There will be restoration of peace, of friendship, of cooperation, of benevolence. There will be a complete coherence between human being and nature. It's really important to understand what Imam is going to come and bring. It will be like this awesome global government, global community. Not these fractions that we have now. will all be on one stand towards an, an, a world of peace. Don't you think that's awesome? Okay. So when we read this du'a, that is what we're waiting for. And that's what we're doing. Okay. All right. So Ramadan now. So I had this 
awesome video and an awesome representation like big posters by Qurrat al Ain. I love her name. I mean, Qurrat al Ain, the joy, the delight of eyes. And believe me, her video was a joy to the eyes. She's seven years old and she has, she knows these mnemonics. You know what mnemonics are? These are the sentences we created to be able to learn the names of the chapters of the Quran, the surah of the Quran in order and she can do them phenomenally. I was in awe. I kept on watching it again and again and again. Zara made a card for her grandma for Imam Hassan's Wiladat and she sent me a picture of it and she sent it to her grandma with some biscuits. Oh, I thought that was beautiful. Zuhair, Muhammad, Fatima, Karima, Safraz, Shahin and Amal have all done their lists for Laylatul Qadr. I mean, the lists are so cute. They're just something else. I mean, at their ages, I wish I knew how to write so much. And almost every single one of them at the top put, at the top said, please make this coronavirus go away. I, I, it's just amazing. They, they think way beyond their years. But today we lost a really awesome lady. Um, her name was Marhuma Russian Banu Lade. I, I spoke to her a few weeks ago. She was just something else. So I'm going to stop here for a moment because we need to recite a surah al-Fatiha for her and all the other Marhumin. I know we're going to do it at the end, but this one specifically for her. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين صدق الله العظيم She knew that she didn't have many days left on the earth but her faith I mean it was just something else I'm in awe just listening to her Right so what we're going to look now is today. Today is the 17th of Ramadan and the 17th of Ramadan since I can remember I mean that's going back a lot of years this was a day when all I could think of was we won it's a battle of Badr it's a, it's it's really the where we had 313 against 10,000 and Allah sends all these phenomenal angels I remember as a child my grandmother used to give us this, this medal. And it, when I say a medal, it was a coin. And she used to say, this is because we won at the Battle of Badr. Okay, so very, very shortly, what is the Battle of Badr about? So the Battle of Badr is, if you can imagine, when the Prophet hears this news that there was a trade caravan that was going to Syria from Mecca. And the reason why they were doing this was that they wanted to make enough money for arms and they wanted to come and attack the Muslims in Medina. So the Prophet prepares an army. And let me tell you, I'm you know, cutting it really short. 313 men, two horses, 70 camels. That's all they had. While the other side, there's Abu Sufyan, Abu Jahal. You, you know Abu Jahal? We talked about him, right? So Abu Jahal has got this army. And he's got an army of 10,000 men, 100 horses, and 700 camels. Some say 1,000. But even then, it looks like 10,000. Okay. So 10,000. 313 and they meet at Badr. The Prophet leaves Medina because he didn't want to have a battle there. So they meet at Badr. Now, Arab tradition has one-to-one -one combat first. So that's how it started. But then there was a proper battle with both sides. You can read about it. But I love this dua. So the Prophet prays. This is in Surah Al-Anfar. So number 8, ayah 9. Allah says to the Prophet, you prayed, you pleaded to your Rabb. So he answered you. And I will help you with a thousand of the angels following one after the other. 3,000 angels. So when the enemy side, when the Makkans were looking at the Muslims, they just saw rows and rows and rows and rows of angels. When you talked about Qadr, remember so many angels. Think about it. When you need help and you're really stuck, read this. Ayah 9 of Surah 8 and see what happens. Now, the Muslims won. They took 70 prisoners. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this because it's important you understand. And when they took those prisoners, they were treated with so much kindness 
that many of them became Muslims and they would say, Blessed be the men of Medina. They made us ride while they walked. They gave us wheat and bread to eat while there was little of it and they just had some plain dates. So the way they looked after the prisoners was far more than they looked after themselves. This is what being a Muslim is all about. And the way they got their freedom was, the Prophet said, if you want to be free, then teach 10 Muslims to read and write and you will get your freedom. The battle of Badr was just something else. So if you're faced with a battle, first thing, plan a strategy. Always have a strategy. That means always make a plan. Then ask him for help. And tell him, just like the Prophet prayed for help in the Battle of Badr, I am asking you for help. Help me. Then do your best and give it to him. And you know what? The last thing, believe you will win. So today, day of winning. We won. That's all you got to know. This is the Battle of Badr. And we will win against this virus as well. Okay. Ask him. We'll all pray together. Always works. Always works. Okay. Now to our A to Z of Salah. Do you remember it? A4, Adhan. B4, Book. C4, Connect. D4, Dua. E4, Essentials. Remember the Essentials? I keep on mentioning them because it's important. 10 Wajibat, 10 fingers, oh, 11. 10 fingers and a nose, 11 Wajibat. Five of them are Essential or Rukn, okay? F4, Forgiveness. G4, Gratitude. H4, Home. We're going to make a comfort corner. I for intention. J for Jahar or Jannah. Uh, uh, Jannah as well. J for Jama'ah and Jama'ah. K for Kaaba. L for Lail. M for Masjid. N for, do you remember we did N for Noor? That's right. Now today we're on O. And O in essence is all about one. O is for one. We simply pray. If you were to be asked, why are you praying? You are praying because of the one God, because he told you and me to pray. Al-Ahad. You know, when Bilal was being tortured, we, we talked about it. All he said was, Ahadun Ahad. One, one, one. And it's really important to understand it. Why else do we pray? To connect to the one God, only him. Me on my own, him on his own. He is unique, I am unique. I connect to him. Each one of us is unique. There is one of us. And we need to connect to the only one. It's really important to keep this one in your head. Anytime you get stuck, ahad, al ahad, all the time. That's why Surah Al Ikhlas is so important. Qul Allahu ahad, one. There is, this is a unique one. Okay? So every time you think of O, oh, you think one, and you think it's the only reason I'm praying. I'm not praying because somebody tells me I am praying because of the one. He told me to pray, he told me how I pray. And this is how I pray because of the one. Just remember that one. Really, really important. You know, when, when children are young, we always teach them one God. And it's the first thing we teach them. We teach them one God and five Ahlul Kisa. We just call them Panjatan. But whatever you want to call them, one and five. One is really, really important. So it's why the one. Okay, now to Laylatul Qadr. Now we talked about it yesterday. I'll just briefly go over it, but I said today we'll talk about the Munajat of Imam Ali. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful to be read throughout the year, not only on these nights. It's just phenomenal. But let's see. The six main aspects of Amal that we're going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow we will do the Amal are Salah. Remember the Salah I talked about? The two rakats, your parents are forgiven. Istighfar, really sorry. The du'as that we read. La'ana. La'ana is... Asking Allah to withdraw his mercy. And I'll talk about it in a minute. The amals that we did, putting your, your Quran on your head and reciting the names of the Masumin and the Ziyarah of Imam Hussein. So let's talk about each bit. The Salah to start off with is to awaken the soul and to tell the soul, focus only on Allah. When we do istighfar, then we're saying, I am sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm turning back to you. I'm going to start afresh with you. The essence of every dua in Laylatul Qadr goes around three or four things. One is Hajj. The second thing is a long life. The fourth thing is increase in sustenance. That means anything that you want physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. And the fourth thing is being able to promote his message. And that's why Surah Al-Ankabut said, start with things that are in common. 
The la'na that I talked about, withdrawing mercy, it's a dua. It says, Ya Allah, take the mercy away. Now the reason for this is, is that there's a lot of people, there's a lot of agencies of evil in the world. And we need to recognize them. By withdrawing mercy away, we're actually saying, Ya Allah, I'm not going to be like them. I don't want to be like them because I know you're going to withdraw mercy away from them. Okay, The amal of the Quran, it's a commitment to the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt. Oh, the ziyara, my goodness. The ziyara of Imam Hussain is a commitment to stand for the truth. So be able to be free and to be able to help others be free in the name of Imam Hussain. With the example of Imam Hussain. Also to ask forgiveness of the sins with the wasila of Imam Hussain. So this is what we're going to do tomorrow. But we're also going to recite the Munajat of Imam Ali as much as we can. And the Munajat is also known as the Munajat of masjid e kufa Munajat comes from the Arabic word Najwa, which means to whisper. It's like a secret. Najwa is an actual, it's, it's, it's a secret. It's an intimate conversation that you have with a friend. You know, like really, really secret. We sometimes confuse it with Urdu. In Urdu, Munajat is a recital or a qasida that you recite on the microphone. That's not what this munajat is about. Now this munajat is divided into two parts. The first part of this munajat asks for refuge on the day of Qiyamah. And if you read this, there's about eight or nine different things and I'll go over them. So we say it's a day when nothing will help except qalb salim These are all from the Quran. All the ayat in this munajat are from the Quran. So we're saying, Ya Allah, we know nothing's going to help except a heart that is righteous, that is peaceful with you. It is submitted to you. The second one is, it tells about the regret of those who did not believe who are mean, who are unjust to people, and they will say, how I wish I was with the Prophet. The third is the guilty will be recognized by their marks. They won't have to say anything. They'll be ingrained in their DNA. The fourth thing, no family re relationships will be useful. No excuses will be accepted. We say, on that day, we control nothing, absolutely nothing. Even moms, dads, spouses, siblings, children, they will only be concerned with themselves. They'll all run away. If we thought we could rely on them, no. And finally, the last one is a human being will want to sacrifice everyone, even those who looked after them on the earth, just to save himself. It's quite a scary day. So Allah is saying, you know, Imam Ali is saying to us through Allah, because the ayat are from the Quran, where Allah is telling us, be aware of accountability of the day of Qiyamah. Then the second part is a comparison of the relationship between Allah and the human being. And there's 23 comparisons. I'd like you to make a list. If you have time and you're at home, make a list of them. I'm only going to do a few today because we need to go to Surah Al-Ankabut. So there's Mola and there's Abd. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. You know what Mola is? It's somebody who protects you. Somebody you are inclined towards. And Abd is the slave. So you're saying, you're my protector, I am your slave. Who can have mercy on the slave or the servant except the master? He's our master. Malik and Mamluk. Malik means you are the owner. I am the owned. Who can have mercy on the owned except the Malik? There's Khalik and Makhluk, the creator and the created. Qawi and Zaif, the strong and the weak. Oh, I like this one. Jawad and Bakhil. Allah is so generous. Bakhil is we are so stingy and we're saying who can have mercy on the stingy except the one who is so generous. Kabir and Saghir, he is Kabir, he is the greatest and we're tiny, really tiny. Ghafoor and Mudnib, he's the forgiver, we're the sinners. Who can have mercy on us except him? Rab and Marbub, oh my goodness, he's the cherisher, nourisher, sustainer, like 70 times like a mom. And I'm a marbub, I'm the cherished one. Who is going to look after me? And we say in Gujarati, Chag. Who's going to give me this love, this immense love, except a rub? And at the end you say, Erhamni, have mercy on me. And the names that we call Allah by at the end is Ya Dhal Judi Wal Ihsan. Oh, the one who has masses of generosity and lots of favors. Wat Tawli Wal Imtinan. And lots of strength, awesomeness, and lots of gratitude. I, it's beautiful.
please read this dua, inshallah, to read it today, and then tomorrow when we read it, at least you will be familiar with it, okay? So can we have a salawat, please? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajim. So what we're going to look now is look at Surah Al-Ankabut. I'm going to look at the last section, and then we'll do a whole summary of it. So the last section of Surah Al-Ankabut is from Ayah 60 to 69, okay? And this section talks about sustenance and safety. Provision and protection is only from Allah and there is guidance for those who strive in his way. Now we're going to look at each ayah and see how we work through it. So if you've got your Qurans there, please recite with me. So we're starting with ayah 60. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa qa'im min dabbatin la tahmilu rizqaha. Allahu yarzukuha wa iyaakum. How many a living creature that you see that does not carry its sustenance on its back. Allah sustains it and he sustains you. And he's the hearing and he's the knowing. Now, the human being is the best of creation. The best of creation. Yet he spends a great deal of time being so anxious. His energy is spent on anxious about where's my next meal going to come off? Where's my food going to come off? animals eat and then they don't carry their provision on the back that's what Allah is trying to tell us he says you have to strive for your food you have to strive for sustenance for your living but you don't make it the be it and all it of life the more we depend on other than Allah we shift it over that means we forget about Allah now what happened here you see the Makkans remember they were being tested we looked at Surah Al-Ankabut in the first bit where they're tested here now there's lots of economic pressure on them Jobs are lost, they're not allowed to work, they don't know what to do. So there's a lot of pressure on them. And Allah is saying, well, Alim, I hear you, I know what's happening. I know it's difficult for you, but know that I will sustain you. And let's look at I-61. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَسَقَّرَ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرِ لَيَكُولُنَّ اللَّهِ فَأَنَّا يُؤْفَكُونَ Now he's talking to the Makkans. And when you ask them, who created the heavens and the earth? And who made the sun and the moon? They will say Allah. So why have you turned away? So Allah is telling them, if you believe in Allah, you know he is the creator. Why is your behavior not godly? Why are you being so unjust to those who submit to Allah? Light, I 62. Allahu yabsutu rizka liman yashau min ibadihi wa yakdir lah. Inna Allah bi kulli shayin alim. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah makes abundant. He expands risk for some people. And some he makes tight. That means he takes away some of it. But Allah knows everything. Now look what he's telling the Makkans. He's telling them, just think for a minute. Your economy is based on idols. All you have is Zamzam and you have the Kaaba. You're a thriving city economically. But who is giving you the sustenance? Do you know? Have you ever thought about it? And he's, and he's telling the Muslims that when he's sustaining, when he's, when he's um, making little your sustenance, Know that he's loving you. He really is. It's out of his love. He wishes you to be his. There's a lot of thinking going on that we need to do. Let me give you a story. Um, some people came to Imam Sajjad and they said, we're your Shias. And he said, really? So they said, yes, we are. So he said, what do you do when you get something? They say, oh, we're really happy. We say, alhamdulillah. What do you say when something's taken away from you? They say, well, we're a bit sad and we moan a bit. What do you do when nothing's given to you? You say, well, don't do anything. You say, well, that's like the dogs of Medina. When they're giving something, they bark and they're happy. When something's taken away, then they bark a bit more and they, they're not happy barking. They walk away. And when nothing's given, they just walk the streets. Our Shias are those who, when they're given something, they say, Alhamdulillah. When something's taken away, they say, Alhamdulillah. When things are a bit at a standstill, they say, Alhamdulillah, all the time. So here Allah is saying, when something is taken away from you, there may be something in there that you need to look at as Allah is drawing him towards you. When something is given to you, then also remember that you need to think about him and share it. Basically, that's the message. Right, let's look at the next ayah, which is ayah 63. 
ولئن سألتهم من نزل من السماء ماء فأحيا به الأرض من بعد موتها ليقولن الله قل الحمد لله بل أكثرهم لا يأقلون So he's saying the same thing. If you ask them, who sends down water from the clouds and gives life to the earth after it's dead? They will definitely say Allah. Say to them, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. But most of them don't understand. It's another rhetoric question. If you believe in Allah, why are you behaving the way you're behaving? Right, now the next ayah, 64. وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَحْمٌ وَلَعِبٌ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِ عَيَوَانٌ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ So Allah is saying the life of this world is nothing but sports, it's just games. And as for the next, for the hereafter, that is really the permanent life. Do they but know? Back to our spider's web. He's saying your worldly life is as fragile as the spider's web. It's like a play, you're acting in it. You know, when you go see a play or you see a movie or you see a program, the actors in it, when the play is over, when the movie is over, they were just characters in the play. That's all we are here. He says your real existence, the permanent existence, is your hereafter. Right? Ayah 65. فَإِذَا رَقِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوُ اللَّهَ مُقْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُ مِلَ الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ He says, when they ride in ships or when we ride in airplanes, airships, they call upon Allah. They're so obedient to Him because they're stuck. When the human being is disturbed, there's no one to save him, he calls upon Allah. But when He brings them safe to the land, they forget. So Allah is saying, as soon as some help comes, some tangible help, they forget. Right, Ayah 66. They become so ungrateful of what we have given them and we say, well, you know what, for a little while enjoy it. Soon you will, you will know. Ayah 67 now. أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا جَعَلْنَا حَرَمًا آمِنًا آمِنًا وَيَتَخَتَّفُ النَّاسُ مِنْ عَوْلِهِمْ Allah is saying, do you not see that we have made your town, Makkah, so safe while people around you are being attacked and taken away? Will you still believe in falsehood and disbelieve in Allah's favors? See, Makkah was so safe. It was surrounded by armies like the Persians and the Romans who were, who were right near them. They were so huge, so massive, they could have crushed the Makkans anytime. And Allah is saying, don't you realize that we're protecting you so much? وَمَنْ أَذْلَمُوا مِمَّنِ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا أَوْ كَذَّبَ بِالْحَكِّ لَمَّا جَاعُوا أَلَيْسَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَثْوَلْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ Oh my goodness, this is so hard. And Allah is saying, and who is more unjust than the one who lies against Allah? Or who lies against the truth when it comes to him? For those who cover up the truth, there is only Jahannam. And finally, the last ayah, which is so beautiful. And those who strive in our way, who work hard in our way, we will definitely guide them to us, to our ways. And Allah definitely, definitely is with those who, who excel in goodness. No one, remember we started off by saying life is a struggle. Allah is saying no one is spared struggle. Life is movement. And he says everybody is caught in a web. You've got to come out of it. It ends where it began. You will not be left alone. You have to struggle. You have to walk the talk and you have to struggle in our way. When I say struggle, you have to work hard in Allah's way and we will totally guide you. You know the word used is subulana. Sabil is a small road. Sirat is the main road. That's why I say, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, the main road to Allah. So he's saying, so let me put Sirat as the highway to Jannah. Can you imagine that? Highway to Jannah. And these Sabil are these little side roads. Imagine a massive motorway and then these little side roads attached to it. So he says, We will show you all the different side roads to come to our highway to Jannah. We will open them all for you. 
all you need to do is work hard in our way. And what was that? We talked about it. Believe and manifest that belief into Amilo Salihan. Deeds that will make sure that that which is broken is fixed, that will heal, that the consequences are good as well. And what the wasa will be hack, what the wasa will sub, and make sure you counsel people with truth to the truth, with patience to the patience. It's phenomenal. And finally, the surah. I've got a few minutes. Eight sections. Walk the talk. Learn from the past lessons. Your world is fragile, just like a, like the spider's web. Strengthen it with Quran, Salah, and Zikr. Quran is a miracle. Use it and start talking to people with commonalities. Those who are disobedient, it's only because they don't believe they are accountable. Success is all about Iman, Amilu Salihat, Sabr and Trust. And everybody will die. And finally, protection and provision are only from Allah. And if you work hard, He will guide you to the highway to Jannah. Inshallah, tomorrow we will do the first amals of Laylatul Qadr. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make, to make us Ahlul Quran, to give us the tawfiq, which is the ability to be able to realize our aspirations in this year. Um, let us end with Surah Al-Fatiha, Dua for Protection and Sierra from Allah Sain. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladheen An'amta Alayhim Ghayri Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Walad-Dalim Li Khamsatun Utfi Biha حر الوباء الحاتمة المستفى والمرتضى وأبناهما والفاتمة السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى لي ابن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد إن شاء الله see you again tomorrow at this time Take care of your mind, Allah Kareem. Rabbana taqabbal minna, innaka anta samiyu alim.